everybody. Welcome to another edition of UFO Counters and Cryptid Phenomena. Hello there, Roger. Welcome, everybody. Hopefully, everybody's doing okay. How you doing there, Russ? Okay, thanks. Yourself? Wonderful. Operation Stealth Camera is in the books now. <laughs> I finally got the rest of the cameras and tape uh, installed and put out uh, this morning. I'm all banged up from the thorns. Uh, man, it, that, it's it's like a jungle out there, you know. So, yeah, but yeah. But uh, I, I I found some uh, good deer tracks, some big deer tracks. I'm talking, and but the the ground is so rough. The deer tracks I found was in the creek bed, but uh, I found some other tracks that were kind of like I don't know. Uh, it's like pareidolia, maybe, you know, cause I was like looking real hard, but you know, I wanted to be, but maybe, you know, but they were too questionable. So I just, I don't know, but, uh, hello, Luna. Welcome to the show. Hello, Catherine. So, uh, I did, I, I, uh, I put out some gorilla tape, the clear tape, uh, uh, some booby traps between trees and I laid some down on the ground. <laughs> Listen, you're dealing with Bigfoot now. If you've done that, he'll be watching and if he gets caught up on it, he'll uh, be coming looking for you. <laughs> hey, you ever seen a cat with tape on its paws? Yeah, of course I have, yeah. Now and can you imagine get it walking and along and it just like gets stuck on its face or, or, or its feet? I mean, yeah, can you imagine... Yeah. So, oh. uh, but I have, I have tried some things and, uh, I have did some military tactics and, uh, uh, I told, uh, some people on the other show, I was like, wouldn't that be awful if all the tape I put out was wrapped up and put on my back door? Now that would freak me out. I could think of worse things. So <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a a cell service where I live once you get good cell service. Enough. But anyways, but yeah, we, so. They'll be falling asleep early hours at morning and there'll be this. Oi. <laughs> we know where you live. <laughs> so uh, the person that went with me the, the first day, right, uh, had no idea what I was doing. And uh, she was like, uh, what are you doing with all these cameras? And I'm like, I'm just seeing what I can catch. And she's like, well, that's a lot of cameras. She was like, and you're mapping everything out. And I'm like, yes. And then when I got the tape gun out, she's like, now what are you doing? And I'm like, no, I'm just trying some ideas. And that just blew, blew her mind. So, but yeah, I would, so... If there's uh so have, you, have you tested any of them first before you came away? Oh or man, just... I had to program each camera. Uh and it was a nightmare to program because you had to program the month, the the date, the time, the uh, the Celsius, the Fahrenheit. Uh you had to uh, also program uh if you want video and pictures, uh how many pictures did you want to take it in its succession? Oh, yeah. So, so there was a lot of programming involved. Yeah. So I was up for hours, you know, programming. Then you, then I had to format each card just to make sure, memory card, you know, just to make sure it was okay. Uh, so the good that. thing is, is that each unit would tell me if the card was good or not. So um, how down the porch to find Bigfoot? Yeah. So, but, uh, but no, so. Now the thing is, is how long do I leave them? So I can leave them up to four or five months if I want to. Uh, but I don't know how long to leave them out there. I don't know if I leave them out there for two or three weeks, a month. So I don't know. So we're just going to let them sit for a while and in summer and see what happens. Let things die down. Well, this is it, isn't it? I mean, the, the big question, do you do it in... A week, two week, a month, two month, three month. Only you can decide, really. You know. Only yeah, you because decide. you know they. Once I was out there, they smelled my Dove baby powder scent. 
Yeah. So yeah, you know, I mean, they they knew I was out there. If anything was around, any animal, you know, because they they could smell the human human scent, of course. Uh so but I I did it to where I funneled. If they did pick up any IR or or anything off the cameras, because some of them didn't have IR, some of them was just motion. How I don't know. It was just some kind of technology. So I did it to where I kind of like funneled it. So no matter uh, if you mess with one camera, I got you on another. So it was like a cam on a cam on a cam, right? A situation. Right. So, uh, but yeah, I was very su- su- uh, su- strategic. I can't even say the word. Strategic about strategic. it. Yeah, uh, about how I placed these. Uh, so I did cover a lot of acres. A lot. Uh, wow. And I covered a lot of points. And not only did I cover open areas, but I covered areas that was very thick, like jungle. I'm talking like Vietnam style jungle. Like, you know, like there ain't no way I'm going this way. Well, that's the way Grizzly went. And I'm paying for it right now with my legs. Follow briars <laughs> and stickers and, and everything else. So. But uh, but it, it's very interesting. So, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Um, I, you know the ones that don't have infrared as such. What it is, um, they've got a chip inside them because one of my friends, uh, I was using, you know, the Andycam, the Sony Andycam, and he had um, he had more or less a production camera. It were more or less, you know, like for, for shooting films. And he was filming at night time. And I, I could not believe he I said, Oh, have you put it on night vision infrared? And he said, No, it is the 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 chip inside was so powerful that you could see at night time without infrared. Oh wow. What, Whatever you the eye could see, the camera saw, you know, and it was amazing. So they must have the same type of integrated circuits and chips in these um, hunting um, video cams and, and what have you as uh, the motion picture cameras. So it, it, is- it could be. So, you know, I, I did a mixture of yeah. brands. And I did a mixture of cost, you know, some of them cost uh, 50, 60 bucks. Some of them cost $180 a piece. So I did a variety because I wanted to test the different technology, right? And yeah. and see, and, and see what, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. Some of them uh, had so many LEDs on them. I knew at nighttime, it probably looked like a dang on spotlight in the woods. Like, woo, like here, wow. I, here, here's a camera, you know. If if it went yeah. off, so so I those I place in certain areas to where if it did see something like that and they were able to see that, well maybe they will go around this way and I can get it with another camera. So that's why I'm saying how I strategically put these cameras up and in, in certain spots to try to funnel things if something's back there. Yeah. Who knows? So I mean, I get it- anything. So if it actually sees the LEDs come on and it looks and it tries to get away, it'll run into another camera. That is correct. Both directions. That yeah, is a correct. Good idea, is that? It's a but good idea. I, I may not get anything. I don't know. So, you know, because they are very good with, you know, trail cams. They play with them. Uh, so uh, I heard they move them. They rip them off trees. They bite them. Uh, so yeah. I heard they, they throw them 50, 60 yards from the tree where they rip them off of. So I don't know. So, and like I said, I make, I may end up empty handed. So I don't know. We'll wait and see. Well, the thing is you've, you've done an actual test now, haven't you? So you'll have to wait and see, at least you've done something, you know, at least you've done something. I mean. I um I, Roger, 
did I want to know if Roger, did you take a magnet to Walmart and try their meat? Did you hear about the magnet and meat? Yeah. No, I can't believe that. So I, I we're gonna I I need I gotta test that theory out. I found that oh, out last listen, night. I I've been hearing theories now for a long time about different things, you know, and um I don't know. It's it's just um, if it's true, what is going on? And there's only one thing. There's only one thing it can be going on, and that is the conspiracy against us. Yeah, I Which don't know. Which it does not bear thinking about. You know, I tell yeah. you, what, I, I, the other day, Chris, I, I came in. I'd been out sat in the garden and. Um, I just come in and there were a little thing uh, come on television about um, the Indian moon landing. I won't go into it, uh, to, but one of the things it showed you um, a picture of it actually landing on the moon, right? Yeah. And I had to sit down. I had a coffee and I, I sat down and I'm, I'm watching it on TV. And I'm I'm not I'm I'm not in well let, let's put how can I put it? I'm looking at the image and I'm thinking to myself this is has got to be a wind up, right? Yeah. When you actually look at the, the, the image of it coming to land, so there's a camera filming it. All right. right yeah. Landing, right? And I'm I'm not feeling that it's an original image. You, you know what I'm saying? It 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 looks fake to me. When it's like when it's landing, when I'm looking at it and it, it's nice goldy color and what have you, and and I'm just thinking to myself, you know, has anybody else turned around and said? That looks like it is fake. If you think that the moon landing from, you know, the, the NASA moon landing were fake, you really need to take a look at this because, to me, you know, there's something odd about the colouring, the lighting, um, the, the fact that something's taking an image of it as it's coming well, there is no atmosphere, is there? So I can't, but coming to land, and I just thought to myself, that looks So fake. you actually see the 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 landing, the the shuttle, or not the shuttle, but the the pod coming you down. You see it coming to land. You see, and it's gold. So it's, it, it, it's, it, it's not like the camera's on the, the pod no. coming. No, it looks so. like it's coming down with it. You know, it looks like it's above it. And then... In line with it and going down, and you're thinking to yourself, "That's bizarre, is that?" Because it does not, um, it, it does, it does not look natural. It doesn't look like um, a natural image. Um, it looks like it's staged for all intents and purposes. You know, um, I'm thinking to myself, "Wow, you know, um, that looks odd. That looks bizarre, to to say the least." Does that? Well, just something. Just I just sat with a coffee. I've just come in from outside, and I'm 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 looking, and I I just thought to myself, you know, has anybody else said that this does not look like a like um a, an original image? It looks like it's been staged. Well, look, somebody else is saying the same thing. I thought the same thing. Russ looked poorly faked. It did. I couldn't believe it. I I thought to myself, no. You know, because it's the first time I've actually sat down. You know, I've seen them all clapping and shouting, you know, when it had landed. and But th this is before the clapping, and it shows you it coming down. And I'm, I'm wow. You know. So, I don't know. It was just, anyway. So, back to the uh, operations room then. So... We've got uh, we've got ever 
long it is you're going to be before you you go back and out out there and uh, have a look. Yeah. So what what about the the? I mean, you know, you said that you'd seen some big. Well, it looked like uh, footprints. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah. <laughs> So the ground is very, very hard and dry because we haven't had any weather, right? So I don't want to, you know how you want something to be something, but if you're not convinced, you don't want to convince somebody else to be like, look what I've got, right? So it, it was very questionable. So I, I left it alone. It, I, I wanted more something that looked like if i showed you a picture i want you to be like damn grizzly where'd you get that not like yeah. what am i looking at so i know what you're saying yeah so i i kind of like threw a lot of that stuff out uh but there were some things that i saw that was questionable now that is also why i put the cameras up in certain locations so you know, like I said, I may come up empty handed. I don't know. I'm, you know, this may be just a big bust and I may just come back with a bunch of wildlife or nothing. Who knows? Well, at but, least that's something. Yeah. You know, I mean, wildlife, lovely to see wildlife in its natural inhabitants and what have you. Um, but there's a good chance that you might catch something else. So you, well, you can't lose anyway. Hope. I hope so. Uh, the the vast amount of acres that was covered, you know, uh, there's a good possibility that hopefully that uh, something will be caught. If not, you know, I will uh, regroup and uh, try something else and uh, try it again and maybe did you a different leave a format. Gift? Did, uh, not being funny, but did you leave a gift out or anything? Uh, no, now what was very strange, uh, behind the house, there was a ball, uh, a kid's ball. And that was very, very awkward. Right. So I threw that out because the neighbors does have kids. So, okay. You know, a ball kids. All right. Let's not put two and two together and make something out of nothing. But I left it there. But. I've got cameras in that area, in that direction. So let's see what happens if that gets moved or picked up or anything like that. I see. Yeah. Right. Because so. I was watching, this is a long time ago now, and I was watching a, a program where um, a chap and his wife had been saying that they'd left gifts out, you know, um, and, and treats. And she, you know, she used to bake for her family and they'd all moved out and they're just her and her husband now. And it was saying that this thing um, had started coming around and they knew when it had come because it was when the old lady were baking, right? And it all was coming to be looking. And he said, you know, like, I'm sure there's something down watching. She said it might be. Uh, you know, somebody uh, hasn't got anything that uh, uh, might be hungry. So they went down and they left this little tray with some cookies on and, and, and buns, right? And they brought some um, buddies and stuff. Um, in, in a, uh, They were like a circle of rocks and there were some buddies in middle and stuff. <laughs> so the raccoons and possums will probably have a heyday with that where I live. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, "Oh, do you have any great poupon, mate?" You know. <laughs> so yeah, so the raccoons and possums would have a heyday. I, I'm, I'm look, I'm picking cobwebs off of me still. Oh. So, uh, but yeah, so they they would have a heyday because we do have wildlife. So, oh, of course, yeah. Uh, but I mean. This was like he, he, the old man had said he'd seen this thing. He said, and it was like a giant looking around in trees, you know, looking down, you know, sort of like at the, the smell. 
the aroma coming down and what have you. So I thought, I wonder, you know, do, do people leave offerings or gifts or or whatever? Oh, yeah. People do, yes. Uh, yeah. There's, I, I know people that feed them. Uh, I know people that gift them. Uh, I know that people that have done this for many years and, uh, and we had them on a show before and some people that regret doing it, uh, because they got sick and they're not able to go back out there and feed them. And they, you know, take their, uh, hostility out on their neighbors and, uh, fish and wildlife has actually been involved and they called them bears because they won't call them Bigfoot, right? Or Sasquatch. Wait a minute. In, in what way do you mean? There were, how was there hostility in, in what way? Yeah. So we had one guy that was, uh, feeding them six to eight peanut butter jars a week, the big ones from Sam's. Yeah. And, uh, when he got sick, uh they were actually going to the neighbors' houses, banging on the house walls outside the houses and throwing the peanut butter jars at the neighbors' houses wanting more. And uh fish and wildlife got involved. And uh one neighbor uh ended up putting their house up for sale. Yeah, I, we actually had him on the show. And uh he he I, played remem the... I remember that. Come my finger. Yes, right? yeah, Brian. So, it'd be, it'd yeah. be just easy. It'd be an easy just buying a peanut butter, <laughs> a peanut butter, and saying, "Take it easy. You're only getting one every but month." But he was doing this for God. I forgot how long, but it was six to eight a week. And these are, I think, are five or six pound jars. I think they're the the ones that you get at the. Uh, at uh same for catering are they for catering yeah pretty much yeah you you get a discount because you're like if you've got a, a a cafe or something and you're gonna use a lot you buy the catering jar right yes these yeah. these are big yeah and uh so that's what he was doing he was gifting them and, and they got hooked on it and uh and he got sick and he wasn't able to go back out there and uh, he didn't live there. He he drove there, and the neighbors knew what he was doing. And uh, and when he got sick, they went to the neighbors' houses, and they were mad. They were like, "Give me my food! Give me my peanut butter!" <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's funny, but I mean, people were scared. People had kids. You know, I mean, he imagine things banging on your wall, tearing up your property. Oh, yeah. And you know, I'm throwing these empty peanut butter jars at your house at night. So, you I know, believe now, him, I, now, 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 they now, put now, 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 you know, I thought, well, I don't want to do that because then it, if something does, you know, whether it's deer or other animals and I don't want them to, you know, I mean, I, I thought about doing stuff, but I, I thought, no, I'm better not. I, let me just do the camera and tape. And uh, I mean, the tape is funny enough because you know how cats are with stuff on their feet, right? Yeah. Uh, how would fish and wildlife and neighbors know was bears throwing jars at houses? Uh, so yeah, Roger, if you never seen that show, uh, the first time we had them interviewed, um, uh, they would not say it was Bigfoot, they they told him, Quit, quit feeding the bears, and uh, then they want to know why he had dates on the jars and the lids, why they were different dates, so they were putting the lids back on. And he was like, well, that answers my question. So, because he was dating them, you know, like August 5th, 19 or 2023 or whatever. And they were unscrewing it and he would leave the tin foil on and they would undo the tin foil. And, and these jars were so clean that he couldn't even replicate how clean they were. He even ran them through the dishwasher and couldn't get them as clean as they were getting them. Now he's got fingerprints. He's got all kinds of stuff, oily fingerprints. There must uh, be DNA. They must have licked it. 
So he actually showed uh, uh, peanut butter jars with the squirrels and raccoons when they got into it, the difference yeah. between Sasquatch and the critters. And there is a big difference. You, you can tell when squirrels. He said it'd be funny we see a squirrel running around with the peanut butter jar bigger in itself across the trail because the lid would be chewed up or, you know, yeah. the where you screw the lid on. Oh, but yeah. these would be just like, nothing was in them and how they get them that clean i have no idea they must have licked inside with them with the tongue something the must have so because that that floored us when he was showing us how clean they were i've seen my mate do that with his plate after he's had something to eat you don't want to see that oh. that's funny no, no it's not <laughs> no it's not oh. <laughs> So, a competition to see who can get the tape, the, the plate, the cleanest. Oh, dear. Wow. <laughs> it might be part Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows? You know, the woods that I, that I grew up in are ancient woods, uh, old farmland. So uh, hopefully I, I catch uh, other phenomenon besides wildlife, hopefully. Um, who knows? So, yeah, we're talking. I, I, I'm to excited. A, I was talking to a, a great chap, um, uh, Colin uh, Keatley, and um, he was on my show the other night and uh, he saw a dog man, uh, wow. quite, quite well, local ish, and uh, quite amazing chap, you know, to have on your show, you know, sort of like uh. A bit like Joe, and another nice guy. But uh, we were talking about uh, this uh, wolf man where where I live, and um, he was saying that they called they called it uh, a different name. Uh, well, they call it Flixton Werewolf, but I forgot what he said they called it. Now I'd heard it been called this name before, Stinky or something, um, because it smelled of sulphur. Wow. Now, I've come across this some time ago, people talking about um, areas where they'd seen these creatures, you know, like uh, Bigfoots and, and um, dogmen and werewolves, or some people used to just call them monsters, you know, uh, or strange creatures. And a few times I'd come across now and it rung a bell when he was talking, when he mentioned this smell of sulphur. Wow. Because that is, um, that is something that a few people have said, you know, over the years, that they had this right rotting, stinking smell of sulphur, you know. But also, isn't that supposed to be associated with um, the devil? Yeah, demonic. Yes, so for smell, yes. That is um, also, you know, sort of like, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of like um, a smell that uh, is associated with uh, unearthly creatures. Not of and this world. That's what's got me kind of spooked because I'm like, okay, so I've got uh, a, a bunch of cameras out. Uh, and I'm like, uh, I'm afraid to go in the woods alone uh, ever since uh, I met the Cherokees and other Indian tribes because uh, they tell you don't go in the woods alone. And I'm like, wow. So uh, I did take somebody with me. And then I'm thinking, uh, you know, what happens if I actually catch something? This is like behind my house, because did I tell you the part where I took the trash out? One thirty two. Oh, my gosh. So it was probably about a month and a half, two months ago, uh, I took the trash out. And uh, I live on a dead end street out, out, out in the country. And uh, I got the driveway is pretty long. And uh, when I was growing up in, in the neighborhood, uh, we used to shovel driveways for 75 cents to a dollar. Yeah. And that's how long they are. And uh, 
So I I was I, I took out some trash and I heard a whistle. It sounded like a bird. And I froze. I'm like, there ain't no birds out. And it was very loud and it came across the street in the section of woods behind the house. And then I heard a response behind my house. I'm like, oh, heck no, uh-uh. Man, I put that trash in. I got right in the house right away because, you know, that's allegedly a sign of Sasquatch or Bigfoot. Uh, now, there are birds that do chirp at night, but not around my part. And usually when they do chirp, it's a sign of distress or a sign of something, right? But yeah. it was uh, very weird. It was like a mixture of, of a bird call. Uh, very unique. And, uh, but, uh, it, it, uh, it, 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 I'll be honest, it spooked me. So, and, you know, and we were doing the show the other night when you was on there talking and I guess you fell asleep because it was so late in UK time. One of the psychics were like, yeah, you're going to get something on, on, on your cameras. And I'm like, whoa. I'm like, ah, yeah, probably wildlife, right? Bunch of deer and, you know, raccoons or whatnot and whatever else is running around in the woods. Uh, because they they did their little dowsing and stuff like that. But, you know, what else is out there, you know, phenomenon-wise, you know, supernatural or whatnot? Because the woods are that old. I mean, golly, I mean, they go back, you know, umpteen years so yeah it, it it'll be interesting and like i yeah, said I think, uh, may not I come watched, up with anything though so i watched that show but I, I did actually go to bed now well the only night i went to bed not feeling brilliant uh i watched the the show last night i watched the shows last night and what i'm right um I always say I, I always say I, you know, but, um, so it's, it, yeah. So the, the, the question is, you know, when you know what you know about this guy with the, uh, with the peanut butter, do, do you sort of like gift them anything? <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't want to get them addicted. You know what I mean? Right. Well, it, it uh, the old saying is, is like, you know, if you don't want the stray animals in your neighborhood and don't feed the cats or the dogs, right? Because they keep coming back for more. Uh, so, because uh, a lot of people do have problems, uh, we found out uh, that feed these creatures and quit feeding them because they get sick, they, they do get mad. Uh, and some people, uh, they just do it when they want, how they want, and they don't have any problem. It, it's just like a roll the dice. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Uh, you know, it, it's mixed emotions. But, you know, I'm not a proponent of, of gifting. You know, I'm not a big fan of it at all. Uh, you know, I don't like or want something to keep coming around and peeking in my windows, you know, wanting something every time that sees me or smelling bread or something being baked. So. Well, that's yeah, but the thing is, um, Chris, that's natural. That's how they are. You don't have to do anything, you know, sort of like um, out of the ordinary for them to come look at it. If it's, if it's somebody baking or cooking, you know, sort of like, it's like, ooh, you know, that's normal to them. And you'd be the same. I mean, you, you know. Well, and they also say, too, is that to keep Bigfoot or Sasquatch away, put up cameras. Because uh, they don't like cameras. So, you know, there's another proponent of that, too. So it, it's. And that's why I say, you know, the, the, how I put these up and how I I use them is is pretty, you know, such a, such a military uh, strategic form, I guess yeah. I can say. Uh, but I don't know. We'll wait and see. And if this doesn't work, uh, if I don't get anything or whatever, I'll try a different method or a different tactic and 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 see what uh, happens. So yeah. Well, I think that is one of the best ways of catching something. 
You know, I mean, I, I've put um, I've put one camera up, and I've got a spare one, but I've just seen the the newest now, and I've seen them on a um, on a on a show on television that sells all sorts of goods, and the new one now, the color is amazing because it goes straight up to my YouTube channel. The night vision, amazing. But now, where I had my camera pointed, um, you can move from side to side and, and sort of like get bigger image and what have you and shrink it. But with the new camera now, on your phone, you can just with a circle, move it up and down and around. So it has a remote control to look up into the sky higher, lower, left and right. And the price of them, I think it's something like um, $45. Oh, wow. And it comes through your house by cable and plugs into your, your mains. You just program it to your to your mobile first before you put it up to see it's working and then you just fix it up you know under your your board um of, you know like on the house you know with your roof yeah right. and um it's something like i'm I'm looking at i'm thinking to myself you, you know do i do I? i've already got two really but it's a bit extravagant but if you've got one that you can move all around wow you know and I am catching some good stuff, but there's one thing I'll say to people, and that is, you know, there's some people that are saying they're getting all sorts on, and you've got to be careful because I've been doing this now for a few years, and you can see bugs flying. You can see birds. You can. One of the things you've got to be careful of is that you've got to be careful of, um, you know, cobwebs. And spiders' webs, when they get wet, you know, like with moisture at night, sometimes they, you can get these, like, um, beads of water. And when they move, it's amazing. You know, so I'm, I'm scientific in my observation and looking at, you know, sort of like um, my photos and videos, you know. But you have got to go around. What I'd say is you should always go around and clean the area, you know, as well as your 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 lens, but the area around your camera as well so that you know you're getting, there's nothing, you know, sort of like impeding that view, if you see what I mean. So right. I do that. I do that nearly every week now. I've got a telescopic extension, uh, fifteen foot, with a little um, cleaning cloth on end, and I just give it a bit of a tickle over and what have you. I'm there like this, and people going past looking at what's he doing. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, Roger I asked it, uh, about the trail cams, and yeah, Roger, they're they are camouflaged, and uh, I put them up in the in the woods and turn around. I don't know what tree there I put them on. Uh, I had to use GPS coordinates. Uh, the problem is allegedly with Bigfoot and Sasquatch, uh, they could see the IR and in infrared off of them, and allegedly too. Not only that they uh can allegedly smell the the batteries or they can pick up the frequencies so that's why a lot of people say if you don't want them around and put up cameras and and they'll stay away from them so uh but there's a lot of things i did with these cameras out in the woods uh to test things to see if i can get around that theory uh and i may not um uh, so uh i see a lot of trail cams roger where they play with them they will wave a stick in front of it they look at it with their eye uh sometimes you may see an arm go in front of it with hair 
Um, sometimes you may go there and your trail cam may not be there and 50, 60 yards from the tree, it's been bitten and ripped yeah. from the tree and tossed. So uh, they're very destructive. So um, like I said, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, or I may just come up empty handed the first try. I don't know. But I covered a vast, a vast area. So, and I finished up today. So I did it in a day and a half. Well, uh, about seven hours total, I would say. It took me to put all these cameras up. So, wow. yeah. That's some time. That's yeah. Some time. I mean, do any of the cameras, you know, like that have been sort of like played with them? And messed about with. Um, do they still work, or have they all all been broken beyond repair? Uh, the ones that I've oh, seen you know? uh, uh, do not work, but they still had the SD card in them, right? Uh, but on the yeah. but the only thing you see are black images, dark images. You can't make out what it is. Uh, you know, does it look human? No, it doesn't. Uh, so, you know, is it a human person playing with the stick? Uh, I actually took a telescopic ladder out, which I didn't use, which I should have, uh, in hindsight, because one of the theories was, was to put them about 10 or 12 feet up in the air off the ground and point them down at a 45 yeah. degree angle. So, right. but I, I, I wanted to try this method first before I use the ladder. Hello, Irene. Welcome to the show. So before I use the ladder, so this time when I use the ladder, now I can move them up or move them to a different tree. So, but there's other tactics well, I've already got planned. What about the one where you, 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 instead of looking from up, you know, putting them up and looking down, what about um, down looking up? No, I didn't because, do any of those yet. Because that way, when when you're walking and you and you're looking, you're usually looking head eye and around you, aren't you? Like that, aren't you? You know what I mean? You don't look down. You never look down when you're walking. You, you know what I mean? Unless yeah, but I didn't. Look. I didn't want to get a bunch of pictures of uh, squirrels or possums and stuff like that. So. I kept it at a certain height. Uh, yeah, but, I know what you're saying. But there are other tactics I am going to try after this one. So, yeah. you know, I am going to mix it up a little bit on the next go around. So, yeah, because one of the things I'm looking at doing is instead of putting mine um, on the, the, the like, uh, house near the, you know, like, uh, the you know, the roof and, and what have you, I'm looking at um, putting one just outside my door so it can mo move all around. So it's not that high up, if you know what I mean. It'll be pointing up. Um, but like I say, it can, it, with this, I'm looking at definitely thinking about getting this remote control one and sort of like, so keeping it very low down, but pointing up, if you know what I mean. Um, right. So I'm 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 doing the same thing myself because I've got a load of stuff to put up on the my YouTube. I'm I'm finding more rods. I don't know if you've come across rods before or not. Um, so I don't. Uh, I haven't taken a lot of video in a long time. Now I've took a bunch of still pictures, uh, and I haven't gone through them because you know how you know when you're out in the woods, you, you get that little feeling like you're being watched so I, I took a bunch yeah. of pictures uh it was very interesting is remember we talked about on a couple of shows is that uh, uh unless you know how to use a, a a really good camera uh manually uh your shutter speed your iso and all that other stuff uh you know you're not going to get a good photograph and if you leave it on auto there's a few times where I went to take photographs on auto. It wouldn't fix on 
an area, right, to take a photograph. So uh, you know why? that was very strange. Uh, I don't know if it was something in front of me, like a, a tree branch, or there's an object that was closer to me than I was trying to focus further out. So that that could be a possibility, you know. Yeah. So yeah, Roger, I'm I'm looking at drones as well. Uh, but as many of these trail cams that I have and the ones that I still have not used in the batteries investment, I could really have a very nice handheld thermal, a high-end thermal handheld. So, uh, you know, hindsight-wise, but, uh, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. You know, we'll, I'll use the technology I have. Uh, it would have been a lot easier if I had two or three people helping me uh, doing all Sometimes, this and stuff Chris, like that. You know, when, you, when you're talking about um, having it on the automatic setting, sometimes it might be because the lighting's not, there's not enough light, you know. Well, that is a possibility. You know, I'm not going to chalk up, you know, anything that's supernatural or anything yeah. that's cloaked or anything like that. It was just, it was just odd because if, if I would point it here, I can take a photograph. But if I pointed over here, I could not. And I moved it just a little, I could, but I put it back, I could not. So it, it was just stuff like that didn't add up, you know, to me at yeah. the time. And it but up, it was um, on automatic settings. So yeah, it could be picking up a branch or something. It's right. You know, so like, and like, and like I said, I haven't had a chance to go through the photographs either no. to see if there's any pixelations or anything yeah. that's, you know, in front of the object. Because, you know, our eyes are like a camera. Our eyes can only focus on one object at a time. So if that camera is picking up something up closer and I'm trying to take a shot further out in the woods, it's not it's going to take that way. picture because it, it, it's oh, trying no. to manually or automatically That's focus right, yeah. on that closer image. So it's going to be out of focus all the time. And that is correct. It's going to so, be trying to focus. It's going to be trying to focus, and you can't take a picture until it's That focused. is correct. That is correct. Um, I was going to ask you, um, so what's the laws like in America then? You, you know, you're talking about drones. Yeah, so uh, as long as you don't live near airports, a lot of the drones you buy over here have a, uh, max uh, height, uh, ceiling height that I'm to come with, uh, restriction wise. Uh, so a lot of the ones that you buy uh, retail wise, you know, will probably go up. I, I think what is it, 1,500 feet? Yeah, 1,200 feet. Mm -hmm. So it, it's nothing extravagant. We're gonna interfere with you know no. with air traffic. You have to have a not. license. So no, you have to have a license. No, you do not. No. Cause over here, you've got to mess about. You've got to go on. They treat you. They, they treat you know adults as children in this country. Again, oh, you've got to go and you've got to go, go on this website and uh, you've got to fill in this form and uh, you know um, do a, a short uh, test and what have you for a license. Wow, you know this is how they treat the people in the UK. Wow, that's interesting. Apart from if you get one that's only um, about 12 inches, you know, some of these small ones have fantastic cameras and can go up just as I. But um, I think you don't have to have a license for them. But the thing is, have you seen these people using them? They're called like um, journal, they call themselves like journalists. Um, and if you've got a website, if you've got a YouTube site and you're going around and giving stories, you basically are a journalist, right? So they're classing themselves as journalists and they're using, in this country, what they've started using is using the common law, which means if you're on public property, you can video and take pictures of anything anyone and they're doing it right yeah um along at some of these uh bases you know like um 
stealth bases, military bases. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> police stations. You know, sort of like, um, and um, they don't like it. And they're saying, don't you like it? Because there's 50 cars in that police station and they're all sat in there. And what are they doing? They're not out policing. They're all sat coffeeing, you know. There's there's all of <laughs> these people. I'm not joking. You know, they're causing havoc, you know, sort of like, um, but they're sticking up for the people's rights under this common law. You know, sort of like, and uh, they're, they're going down the road filming and the police say, you can't film. And they say, oh, we can. And they've got a camera on filming them. And they says, you're supposed to tell me that you're filming me. By law, a policeman, a policewoman has got to tell you if they're filming you. So there's all this common law thing going on now. And it's unbelievable to watch. You know how the how the police try this these tactics, you know, colonial tactics of keeping people down, and some of these people now know about the common law, and they can just tell them go away. Am I suspected of a crime and and all this lot, and you know what I mean? But um, but like I say, the thing is, this is because. They're treating us in this country like worse than terrorists. You know what I mean? It's like you're not allowed to take cameras here, you can't do this. Having said that, I personally don't believe you should be able to film people. Personally, I don't agree with it, even though it is a common law that you can take pictures. People don't want to be having the photographs taken. You know what I mean? I can understand why they're doing it in a way, but sometimes I think, you know, come on, you know. Yeah, but I mean, the ones that I'm seeing over here in America doing it, uh, they're they're just aggravating, you know, causing stirring the pot, you know, making a scene and and going overboard with it. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah. I, I respect people's privacy and wishes. You know, if if I'm out and I'm in a new place and I'm taking photographs of a city or a town, uh, I'm I'm really going to do my best due diligence not to put people in the photograph or video because yeah. number one, I don't want to look at your ugly mug. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I want I want to look at the scenery and and yeah. and what I'm taking pictures of. I don't want to see you in it. Uh, yeah. but you know, they want to show that, you know, this is my right and this is my constitutional right in America and they're bumbling idiots in my book, but it's just yeah. me. So no, I would, I would say sometimes that that's what it is. It, it's like trying to prove a point, you know, sometimes I think it's like, you know, but, um, the fact that what I'm saying is though, you know, um, there again, you know, using drones, you know, um, if, you, if you're if you using them, looking for crop circles or UFO landings, right, or Bigfoot, you know, for um, footprints or if, if you're looking for, um, you know, eyes and what have you, you know, What's wrong with doing that? You know what I mean? Instead, that this this is a problem, though, and I can understand from this point of view why these people do sometimes. Why can't they leave people alone that are not breaking the law, that have got um, a fantastic subject they enjoy researching, and you're going out, and as you can see, because it's all over the internet, it's on Facebook, it's on his YouTube, people know what we're doing. You know what I mean? We're not doing anything sinister. You know what I mean? But they seem to treat us with content sometimes. What are you doing? You shouldn't be here, really. And I suppose that is, you know, sort of like... Um, you know, so sometimes it brings people in. 
you know what I mean, as well, you know, I don't, you know, you can see sometimes why people might start getting a little bit act off and thinking these are G-men, you know what I mean, and all as I'm doing is I'm doing what I do, you know, only bit of pleasure I have these days, investigating and going out where I can, and the thing is, the drone can go a lot further than my legs at the moment. <laughs> well, that's different. I mean, it's not like you're going to a police station or a government building stirring up the pot, though, to no. prove a point. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's that's yeah. that's what I'm saying. You know, we we, we know your rights. We know, but yeah. you know, they they want to prove a point, and you know, it's just like. And and they actually sometimes they break the laws because they're ignorant of the laws and you know, well, I don't have to identify or I don't have to do that. And well, you know, uh some places you do and you know, and and it's terrible because they think they know the law and they don't, and, and they end up getting in trouble. And then people see what they do in one city or state. And they, they're like, well, Russ did it over in Tennessee. Well, I'm going to do it in Georgia. And, and Georgia's got laws on the books that are different than Tennessee. Then they get in trouble. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it, yeah, it's just totally terrible. Agree. Yeah, totally agree. But the thing what I don't like is, you know what, like, and have you had this? When you've been out with your camera and police have asked you what you're doing, no, nobody never asks me what I'm doing. Hmm. Yeah, well, not so nice. Not not so nice. You know, because I've never been in a place where people are going to see me when I'm doing with the camera, first off. Well, you, you see, know, the thing and, is, I'm in the UFO capital where the bay is, and I'm filming things coming down and out of the bay. You know what I mean? Um, from the sea to the sky. Minding my own business. And that is something that I think to myself, on a good day, yeah, catch me on a bad day and you'll be called all, all the naughty words in, in the big book. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whether the police or not, you know, I've got a right to film. You know, sort of like I'm filming UFOs and I've been doing it for 30 years. What have you been doing? You know what I mean? And this is a big problem. This is a big problem. You know, when they, when they start uh, encroaching on somebody's, um, well, daily, I, I do this, you know, daily, you know, video and what have you, not hurting anybody, you know, like uh, the sea, the sky, you know. That's when I've got a problem with these people. That's when I've got a problem with them. You know, you know but uh, are you in a place where they're going to stop you and ask you, what are you doing? Well, yeah, obviously, that's what I've said. You know, well, what are you doing? I'm well, where are you at where they're asking you, what are you doing? In a big park in front of the sea where there's a big... Yeah, okay, uh, if I was a police officer and you told me you're filming UFOs, I'd probably chuckle and be like, all right, go film your UFOs. Bye-bye. None of his business to ask. Shouldn't be asking. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm well, not, I'm the not only thing I tell lot. people is killing with kindness, man. You know, uh, you know, I mean, you, you, people get rough and tough with law enforcement, and then that causes bad blood and friction. That's that's and, the problem, though, Chris. When you get when you get an attitude like that, right? Yeah, when you get attitudes like that, I've seen them gangsters that they won't even go near them. Yeah. Me, not doing anything wrong, what you're doing me with that. Now, that makes people's blood boil. You know what I mean? It's like, wow. But, um, yeah, so the, the, the so you're okay with drones there. Like I say, again here, we, you know, you've got to take this, uh, this, this so-called uh, test for a, a drone and what have you. But, uh, not good, not good. Yeah. And yeah, I could never... do. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just saying I could. I, I've got to go to a, a place, 
uh, where there's um, a UFO crash landing and there's some uh, some metal what we got to go pick up and I need to go um, via a drone first to the area because um, my walking is, is shot now but until I have my operation you know what I mean sort of like whatever that's going to be now um, so I'm just stuck so the thing is I'm thinking about uh, getting swapping one of my bikes for a trail bike and, and going on a trail bike there you go so I'm, I'm just thinking about doing that you know put my backpack um, a military shovel telescopic shovel and my cameras and stuff and, and going out on my trail bike you know so that would be one way of doing it yeah it would be well but, that's another another good showdown russ is awesome so yeah, well, we'll wait and see what we're going to do with the cameras and i'll keep you posted yeah well i hope you have some luck with it uh, chris it, uh, it sounds good and uh you've just reminded me i've got to travel up through some footage now I've got about four weeks of footage. Oh, wow. And, uh, I've got to go look. I've got rods and all sorts of stuff. And so I'm going to, you know, sort of like, uh, might keep it to this other computer now, what I'm doing. And then I can actually show people on the next show. Oh, that'd you know, be awesome. What, what I'm filming. This is what I'm doing now at Side Here, just getting it sorted out, hopefully. Awesome. But, uh, well, yeah, so thanks uh, again for a, a – it has been a, a good show. And I, like I say, I hope you have uh, some good findings with your, with your I cameras. I hope so. So every time you smell something bacon, just think about Bigfoot out back looking at me. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that old lady baking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. So I'll Sounds keep good. you posted, and uh, we'll probably leave them up for probably about two or three weeks and see what happens. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, from coast to coast and around the world, that's a wrap. We'll see you uh, at 6 o'clock uh, Eastern time. Take care, and God bless. We'll see you. Bye-bye.